Hello, Republic of Gamers, and welcome to ROG Pulse, the weekly podcast where we dive into the various technologies we make here at ASUS. And today, we're taking apart a Zephyrus G14. Joining me here on the show, we've got headquarters, Sasha Manning, the mic. Welcome back once again. How are you? Hey, good morning. Good, good. Good, good morning for you. Good evening for me. And we've got a special guest here to do the teardown. Who's joining you over there? Uh, this is Kunlin from our mechanical engineering team. He's going to be the hands uh, that are going to tear this one down and strip it into all its bits and pieces while we talk about it. It's a lot of fun. We actually did this once before about a month back, tearing down another device. And today it's going to be the G14. And I see we've got two of them in front of you, which are, these are just the same device, different colors? Yeah, so this is the G14 in white, and this one is in gray. And uh, yeah, it looks very dark on the camera here, um, but it's actually a dark gray. It's a nice dark gray, similar space gray, as you might call it. Um, yeah, and this one is really nice, clean white. These are both engineering samples, so um, there's some small differences, uh, but I think most people would not even notice it. If you have a G14 at home, you might notice like one or two things looking slightly different. Hmm. But uh, yeah, for, for all intents and purposes, it's fine for us. So the teardown, these are just good. Very cool. Now, if you guys do not know anything about the Zephyrus G14, it is a smaller laptop with a lot of power. And even just looking at 2020, some media outlets even claim that this is the best gaming laptop of the year. I think we're very proud of it here at Asus. Um, Sasha, what, what do you think? Is this our best laptop of the year, you think, for gaming? I think for us, it certainly was the best gaming laptop of 2020. It was a smash hit. It was a huge success. It was uh, like we couldn't make enough of them. They were on back order the whole time, and everybody was like all the salespeople were fighting over the supply that we had. <laughs> um, yeah, so for us, it was certainly the the best gaming laptop of 2020. And yeah, several uh, several reviewers and a lot of people out there um, considered this the best gaming laptop of 2020. You know, mobile Ryzen 4000, 35 watts, eight core CPUs. Uh, that's amazing performance in a really nice high efficiency uh, power envelope, only 35 watts, yeah. something we developed together with AMD. Um, think of it kind of like as a uh, you know, high efficiency version of a CPU. You usually have U series for Ultrabooks, which is around 15 watts. And then you have your H series mobile processors, which is uh, 45 watts and higher performance. That's usually what you have in gaming laptops. So we wanted to go for something more power efficient and AMD as well. So we were like, hey, let's work on this together. We want to bring gaming to a wider audience. We want to make it more portable. So we want to bring the weight way down to only 1.6 kilos, which is a really huge step um, compared to regular 15-inch gaming laptops that weigh around 2.1 kilos. So it's half a kilo less, but you still get similar specs to what you have in a 15-inch gaming laptop. And, and for those of us that use pounds, that's about a 1.2 pound difference, I believe. Yeah, that's, that's around one pound. Uh, I think it's a bit more than one yeah, pound. Yeah, a little yeah. bit more. So yeah, we worked together with AMD on making a 35-watt high-efficiency mobile processor that sits in between your regular standard 45-watt gaming mobile processor and a 15-watt Ultrabook processor. Because those 15-watt Ultrabook processors usually are quad-core CPUs. Um, and for gaming, you know, you want a lot of cores, you want very high clocks as well. You want more PCI Express lanes for the GPU as well. Uh, what well, the U series uh, usually only has four. So all this kind of stuff uh, we worked together on and, and the performance is really uh, better than we anticipated. You know, when you work on a project, you never know how it's going to turn out. I don't know if AMD knew at the time when we kicked off this project, which was, you know, years before it actually came out, right. um, what the performance was going to be like. But yeah, it, even us internally, we were like, damn, this is really nice. <laughs> A powerful machine. And one thing that I think is really interesting about the device in general is the fact that most of ROG laptops and products you look at, they really scream, I'm a gamer. I have an older yeah. ROG laptop that is just like, it's just got the gray uh, metal body with the red and the red glow. And it has the big Asus ROG logo on the back. The eye really does just kind of scream in your face. Whereas this is very unassuming yeah it's it's the elegant gamer i suppose 
that was another big thing about, like I said, we want to bring gaming to a wider audience. So uh, bringing the weight down is a big part for that, it, making it smaller, more compact, and also making it look, you know, like like you said, it doesn't scream gaming laptop. It looks way more stylish and understated and simplistic. And uh, yeah, the contrast of the camera, let me see, another angle maybe. Yeah, there you go. So it's really nice, simple finish. Um, there is no huge Eagle Eye logo. Like we usually have our Eagle Eye logo that you can see here on the on the desk mat in the center. Um, we have one, but it's really small here in the corner. This looks kind of like a fashion label that you see on like clothing, designer clothing. So it's very cool, understated, yeah. stylish. And from another angle, maybe you can see it better. We still have a dot pattern on there for our famous yeah, here you can see a little bit. So there is a very understated dot pattern as well to create this slash. We always have this diagonal line on our lids. Um, so you can still, it's it's more obvious when you see it in person than here on the camera now. But even if you've never seen this before, you don't know what it is. You see this laptop, you know instantly it's an ROG laptop because right. of this subtle slash on the, on the lid. Um, but besides that, it's very understated. It does have a really nice futuristic look to it, especially here on the back when you look at the vents. Um, it has a nice modern futuristic look. But yeah, very simple design overall. Like you said, for people who want to take it to work, you know, to school, to university, you don't necessarily want to go to a meeting carrying, you know, a, a big chunk of gaming laptop that is flashing in all sorts of colors and yeah. Gaming laptops have come a long way when it comes to size and portability. That's for sure. But uh, I think I'm ready to get into the meat of it. Let's let Kunlin loose so we can start ripping this bad boy apart. All right. Um, we're going to do the turn it on the white one. So I'm going to move the gray one over to the side. So okay. now, Kunlin, you have all the space you need, I hope, <laughs> to do the teardown. And yeah, it's it's impressive. Just like last time when we did the teardown of the Zephyrus Duo, maybe I can put it into the camera. So these are the only tools that he's going to use. Uh, only four different tools. So yeah. you know, you always see those uh, teardown toolkits with like I don't know hundreds of different tools and everything. But uh, yeah, our engineers very skilled. Just very few tools. Very easy to open. So for anyone who wants to you know dabble around in uh, the internals of an RNG gaming laptop, you don't actually need that many tools to, to open it up. It makes a lot of sense to have Good. similar screw size in, you know, across the board too. And that's one thing that stood out to me is I remember taking apart some electronics when I was younger. Uh, I used to repair consoles in high school because it was a nice way to make some money on the side and there were, everybody had consoles, oh. right? Uh, but I remember there being a lot of different screw sizes and, and so on in the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I mean, in the end, when it comes to manufacturing cost, a big part of it is how much time it takes to put something together. And yeah. the more different screws and different custom tools you need to assemble something, you know, the more time it takes, so the more it costs to manufacture a part. So there's, there's also a financial interest uh, to just keep things simple. Um, but yeah, it also helps a lot with, with the teardown. And that's something that we've actually worked really hard on and we're trying to simplify things even further. So the screws are all the same. Uh, you, you only need one screwdriver, you only need with one screwdriver head, but we're trying to simplify it even further so they're all the same length because some uh, screws right now are still longer than others. So if you do this teardown at home, uh, I mean, I'm not endorsing it and telling you to do it, but <laughs> if you do it, <laughs> make sure that you um, place them on the side I mean, you've probably seen other people do teardowns, so, you know, yeah. If you if you take the screw out from the top left, put it here at the top left. When you take it out from the top right, put it here at the top right. So have your, like, uh, overview, your, have some structure to it. So later when you put it back together, you know which screw is actually from where on the laptop. Because if you uh, screw in the wrong screw in the wrong place, it might be too long, and then you, you might puncture a heat pipe, possibly. It might touch the PCB. It, most likely it's going to be fine, um, but you never know. So just be careful with, with where where the screws go. Okay, so uh, Kunlin now removed the bottom part, the bottom cover. And here you can see there's some enforcement we have uh, to make sure that the uh, chassis stays rigid even when you're pressing on it. Because we noticed that some people 
pick up the laptop with just one hand because it's so light. Right. Um, people actually just pick it up with one hand and hold it with one hand. That means, though, that you're putting a lot of pressure right here, which is where we have the fan grow. And the fan grow, obviously, structurally, is not the strongest part uh, of the laptop. So we reinforce this part to make sure even if you're holding it like this and you're shaking it and pressing on it really hard, um, you're not pressing the fan grill into the fan itself. Um, real quick, could you just move your mic a little closer to your mouth? It seems to be cutting in and out oh, yeah. just a little bit for some reason. And I think that should Is this better? Sense. Yeah, it's much better. Good, good, good. Um, so yeah, the fan grill, that's something I never would have considered. Like, I guess this is why I'm not an engineer working on one of these devices. The fact that that's a common place for someone to grab it, no damage can be made yeah. to it. And this is something actually we found that some of our competitor devices do have that issue. So some yeah. of our competitor models, if you pick them up with one hand and you press on the fan grill, you'll hear that it's scraping against the fan and it's, you know, the laptop's not going to burst into flames, but it's not good. <laughs> it's not going to, you know, do the laptop any good if you, if you keep doing that. Um, yeah, and overall here you can see also how we shape and guide the airflow. So you can see that there's an intake here and there's also an intake here. And you can see that some of the intakes, we close them because initially during the product development, uh, we think about how much space we want to draw in fresh air from which part of the laptop. So what a lot of people don't know is we actually draw quite some air through the keyboard. So that's not just really? to um, have a different, yeah, not just to have a different place uh, to get fresh air in, but also to cool the keyboard. So we want to make sure the keyboard stays cool when you're playing games, um, especially in a compact system. So like I said earlier, you know, this has similar specs than 15-inch gaming laptops. And squeezing that into a 14-inch gaming laptop, obviously you have similar amounts of power, similar amounts of heat, but you have much less space to get rid of it and, and move it around. So that's where it's really important to um, manage the airflow very well. So what we do is during product development, we open up as much as we think we need uh, or even more. Right. And then during during the uh, evaluation phase, we cover parts of it and see how does it affect the airflow. Um, we run a lot of simulations, obviously, as well. That's how we decide where we put those vents. But then later, we close some of the vents because we find, OK, if we restrict the airflow more over here, it obviously means more air then has to go through here. So this changes how the air moves through the system. If we would close these entirely, for example, we would then much more air through the keyboard, but then maybe the SSD would get warmer, or the VRM for the CPU or GPU would get warmer. So you kind of have to, you know, balance everything out. There's yeah. some people saying just open everything and just open the whole bottom part and just let the air go anywhere. You can't do that. Um, and sometimes you actually get a, a, an improvement for some temperatures, like maybe the CPU gets a lower temperature or something else. But there's a lot of different components that you know we have to consider overall, like motherboard components, SSD, memory. And that's that's something that most people don't really care about. Like, who can tell you what temperature their memory is running at or what temperature their VRM is? Like, nobody really knows, right? But from our point of view, we have to be very uh, aware of that because we want to make sure this laptop lasts. Officially, it has to last two years, but we want it to last five years or even longer, right? Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. A lot of consideration for the cooling there. Yeah, so, um, and here you can see, um, this is the battery down here, obviously. Yep. Um, and here we have the SSD, which is covered by a Mylar tape. And here we have the memory. Is that an M.2? M yeah, this is an M.2. M.2. SSD. And then the memory module chip. And then the, the down cooling. here we have the speakers on both sides. We have four speakers. So these are the speakers that are firing down. And um, there's also speakers. Let me open up the other one. You can see on the one that we didn't open. Um, there's two more speakers facing huh. up. And those are the tweeters. So for the high frequency stuff, uh, you want that to be very directional. So it's pointing straight at you from here. Cool. Um, and for all the lower frequency, you want it to come in direction to be more, you know, uh, from, from under the laptop or from the side of the laptop, so it's better. Okay, let's, uh, let's set Kunlin back at it. Cool. So here we got the CPU, here we got the GPU, we got the heat pipes um, going around doing their work. And uh, yeah, so sorry, one more thing. For sure, Kunlin sure, sure. Is for the thermal module, like I said, it's really difficult to get all these components into a 14-inch laptop, right? And 
one way of how we made that happen is we have exhaust on the sides as well, which doubles the surface area and doubles the airflow that you can get from the thermal module. And that was a key part to be able to have up to an RTX 2060 in here and also have an 84 mobile Ryzen 4000 in here. All right, cool. let's get started. The next step. Chad is asking the battery size. Do you know it offhand? Um, it is, I can read it off here, 76 watt hours. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't remember, it was 67 <laughs> or 76? Uh, yeah, it's 76 watt hours. So, um, pretty good battery size for such a compact laptop. Um, yeah. I don't, you know, 14 inch usually have ultra books. There's very few, if any, gaming laptops in 14 inch or even 13 inch. And uh, those usually have battery sizes of like 40 watts, 50 watts maybe and this at 76 is almost double so yeah the battery life is actually really good for this one as well we're getting over 10 hours of video playback um so that's really impressive for a gaming laptop yeah so what is that hex pattern below where the battery was um this is uh this aids with the structural strength of the palm rest so we want to make sure this is super light like i said 1.6 kilos and we managed to do that by using magnesium aluminum alloy, which oh. is expensive, but it is notably lighter and more rigid than just aluminum or, or plastic. So adding this honeycomb structure makes the palm wrist even stronger. And you really feel like, um, if I take the other G14 again here, you can press on this palm rest. It's, it's super solid. So this this feels like a... CNC unibody kind of strength. It's it's super strong, super rigid. Right. So yeah, the first thing Coolin did was he removed the battery. Uh, you unplug the battery and then you remove it. That's always the first thing you want to do with any kind of electronics, just to make sure you know you don't accidentally turn the system on by shorting contact zone, and to make sure there's no power running through any of the traces and the wires while you're messing around with them. Okay, he already removed the SSD and the memory module. I can see those at the top, right? Yep. And now he's just removing uh, all sorts of wires. This so one is this is like the various the ports? Wi antenna. Okay, Wi-Fi antenna. I know this has USB Type-C charging support. Yeah, so that's another really cool thing about the uh, not only G14, but all of our RG Zephyrus models. We support Type-C charging. Mm -hmm. So while, you know, the, Components are really powerful, so you need more than 99 watts. Type-C charging can only go up to 99 watts. It's not enough to give you the full performance of the system. So you still get a 180-watt adapter, a regular 180-watt brick with your um, G14, although that one is really small and compact for the G14. We made it smaller and lighter, and, and that's really cool as well, because if you have a very light and compact gaming laptop, but then you have a huge power brick and it's really heavy, it defeats the purpose, right? right yeah. So we made that adapter as small as possible and as compact as possible. And on top of that, we also support Type-C charging. So you can bring a really small, compact, light, lightweight uh, Type-C charger and use that to power and charge the laptop as well. So if you go out and, you know, Probably most of your gaming is going to be stationary, either at home or in the dorm or in, in, in one place. So you can leave your 180 watt adapter there and you just get a small Type-C PD power delivery adapter, 65 watts, 50 watts, or even 30 watts is enough power and to charge the laptop on the go. And that, that one is super small, super light, so you can just have it in your pocket with you all the time. Um, I got one that's, I think it's like... Uh, 80 grams, 80 grams, 60 watt charger, wow. and that one works. That one works super well, and yeah. you, know, you can use it to charge to charge anything and to power anything. I yep. use that for my phone, uh, for my tablet, for my laptop, and it's super convenient. So here internally, we're always kind of uh, ahead of the curve a little bit because we get early access to the hardware, obviously. <laughs> so here it's already normal that in meetings you see a lot of people walking around with small compact Type-C chargers. So they go into a meeting room and they bring their small Type-C chargers because some people, you know, spend most of the day in meetings. So, and uh, it's important to always have, have the battery fully yeah, charged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah. Just thinking about, you know, being on an airplane, you, try, you, you can keep your charge phone no problem, but sometimes 
um, it, it is tough to keep your laptop charged and it's becoming more and more common to have actual outlets on these kind of, you know, planes and flights and everything. But type C charging yep. definitely makes it easier because if you were just going on a short trip, you could just bring your one charger for your phone, for your laptop and you're fine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you can see there's a lot of move right there yep. um, on the GDDR memory here next to the GPU and also on the VRM for the GPU and for the CPU. Okay, we can see the cooling plate. Here we got plate. the thermal module. Yeah. Beautiful. So yeah. this is the bottom side of the thermal module. So you can see this is where it touched the GPU and this is where it touched the CPU. We got very good contact all around for the CPU and the GPU. Um, I don't see any bubbles or gaps, so very, very well done. <laughs> Plenty of uh, thermal goo for the secondary components like the VRM and the GDR memory. Very good coverage for those. And you can see very detailed structure for the thermal module. Um, exactly, you know, getting the height right. Because you can see the height for the CPU cold plate and the GPU cold plate is different. Because the thickness of the silicon dies is different. Uh, and the package is different. So it has to be super precise, like down to the... Uh, last digit after the millimeter, so some millimeter precision. Yeah. Yeah, and here you can see all the exhaust vents, and all painted in black. I mean, nobody's ever going to see it, really. <laughs> the company people open up their laptop, but it does look so cool. <laughs> I love it. It is cool. It does fit the theme. I like the red motherboard and the, the black uh, yeah. cooling module. But a uh, question from chat. Can you upgrade the RAM on the G14? Yeah, yes, you can. Um, there's some onboard memory, so some of the DRAM is on the motherboard itself. But like we like we showed here, there is a memory slot, a sodium slot here as well, and we removed it over here. What is so, the default? Is that 16 yeah. right there? Um, this one is an AGB module. Okay. So you could make that a 16 if you if you chose. Yep. And uh, yeah, so you can see this is the CPU. You got two heat pipes going to the right and you get one heat pipe going to the right side here two to the right top and two to the right side yep. and then you also have heat pipes going to the top left so that means cool the cpu let's say you're only running the cpu you're doing video editing uh cpu ray trace 3d rendering or something like that so okay. intense cpu heavy loading you can then use the exhaust here and the exhaust here and the exhaust here so all for the cpu the wow exhaust just to cool the CPU, which means you're able to dissipate a lot of heat, so you can boost the CPU to a higher TDP, higher power, and get more performance out of it. And then for the GPU here, we got one heat pipe going to the left, two heat pipes going to, going to the top left, and then also these two heat pipes going to the top right, plus an additional heat pipe that goes from the GDDR memory and the VRM also to top right. So for the GPU, the same thing. You can use three of the exhaust vents to cool the gpu in case you're doing uh you're playing a game that is not very cpu heavy uh most of the thermal module is going to be able to cool the gpu and give the gpu um allow the gpu to boost to higher tgp and higher clocks higher performance. now could you go into the settings and say that you wanted to favor cpu cooling is that a possibility or is that not something the user has control of um um you can adjust the fan speed um, okay. in our manual mode, and you can actually adjust the fan speed individually, fan speed individually for the CPU fan and the GPU fan. And you can also see what the CPU fan speed is in our crate in our system. Mode. Nice. And what's really cool about it is we also display fan noise numbers at the system, system noise numbers in our crate, so you can actually see at any moment in time how much noise is your gaming laptop uh, huh. producing right now. And you have to keep in mind, though, that was measured in an anechoic chamber. So, you know, those futuristic sci-fi-looking rooms with uh, two-meter-thick foam pads on the walls yeah, yeah, with yeah. spikes and everything. So because that's important because every little uh, noise adds up. You have all those different frequencies. If you think of, like, a pond uh, water surface where you have uh, waves running around if it's a completely calm pond and you're just dripping water into it you can see exactly how much uh, of a disturbance you are creating with those drips of water but if there's you know uh, waves all over the place it all amplifies and the waves add up on top of each other and you end up with 
more noise, right? So in an anechoic chamber, you can measure what noise is only coming from the laptop. So let's say in a typical scenario, that's going to be 35 decibels, which is super quiet. But then you might feel like, hey, this isn't actually that quiet. I can hear the laptop. That's because there's a lot of other sounds around you that all amplify what the laptop is putting out. So if you measure it yourself, you'll definitely measure higher numbers than what you see in Armory Crate. But that's not a mistake. It's just because one was in an anechoic chamber and the other one was, uh, you know, is measuring everything. All right, the, right, all right. This sound. Okay. It seems like Kunlin has made a lot of progress here. The display has been removed. Um, anything special with the hinges on this device? Seems like they're probably just our standard laptop hinges. Um, we do actually have Ergolift on these. So that lifts up the laptop from the table. So you can have extra air drawn in from the sides to help you uh, with extra airflow. Um, that's a really neat uh, little trick. It also improves the typing angle of the keyboard a little bit. So here you can see the keyboard. And even though it's such a small, compact laptop, you can see we still had space to put our hotkeys in here, which uh, most of our gaming laptops have to quickly adjust the volume up and down, mute your microphone, very useful in the COVID times right now. And also uh, you have your quick access button to launch Armory Cray to access all your system settings. Very cool. So here we got the speakers on top. Um, yep. And these are, these are the tweeters that I mentioned earlier. So these are sitting um, right here on the palm rest where I'm pointing right now at the bottom. So this little grill, that's where the tweeters are. And this is the tiny little tweeter I'm holding in my hand here that sits under there. So, um, what is that attached to? These... Just the motherboard on attached... its own? Okay. They're attached to each other and then they plug into the motherboard. Okay, yeah. Okay. And then you have the two uh, speakers that are down firing and they're attached, attached to each other and then they get plugged into the motherboard as well. Yeah. And then here we got the power button, which is not a regular power button, it's an SSO. Uh, fingerprint sensor and SSO means single sign-on. So that's that's a really cool feature that usually only commercial business laptops have have uh, where you press the button once and it captures your fingerprint and powers on the system. And that's as soon awesome. as Windows has done its loading and is ready, it then asks for the fingerprint, receives the fingerprint, and then locks you in. So you really just press the button once when the laptop is off or in sleep and it then powers on and then locks you in right away. On other laptops that have a fingerprint sensor for authentication, you have to press the power button, then it loads the OS, and then you have to press the finger button, uh, the, the, the power button again to actually scan your fingerprint. Huh. So instead of two steps, it's one step, which is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll hopefully have that on more models in the future. I really like that feature. That is super cool. Right, so we got the fans on top as well. You can see that they were taped to the thermal module. Yep. And you can see there's some guide, some foam on the edges as well that guide the airflow through the thermal module. Because again, we want to make sure we direct the airflow as much as uh, possible. We, wanna, we, we calculate very detailed and do a lot of different tests with how we guide the airflow through the thermal module. Um, yeah, and here we got the panel with the ergo lift hinges. Um, the bottom bezel you can see is bigger than on regular laptops because for gaming laptops, you need more driver ICs for gaming panels. So what's special about the G14 as well is that instead of regular 14 inch panels, it comes with a 1440p panel, a QHD, WQHD panel, um, or a full HD 120 hertz panel, which is uh, first for 14 inch. So 120 hertz high refresh rate nice. gaming panel. And whenever you go for a higher refresh rate, you need extra driver ICs to uh, drive the panel, and those need a little bit of space. Makes sense. And oh. then here we got the touchpad, which is pretty cool to look at as well. Um, is this the touchpad that can also act as a numpad or no? Uh, no, this no, is okay. a this regular is a standard, touchpad. Standard yeah. touchpad. Yeah, we've got a few different yeah. style touchpads, which is really fun. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he's taking off the... Yeah, so, so here you can actually see the driver ICs. Yep. Under the panel, so here, and then can the wires change below the angle that a bit? are... Oh, sorry. There we go. Uh, it's off camera, yeah. <laughs> there we go. So... 
you can see the bottom bezel of the screen, half of it is for the driver ICs and the other half is for the Wi-Fi antennas. So that's the Wi-Fi 6 support, which is spread out throughout the device. Yeah, yeah, correct. And then is the enemy matrix right on the back there? Yes, um, although the units we got here today do right. not have the enemy matrix. It would be we, there. we did an enemy matrix teardown. Uh, we got a separate video, I guess, uh, for those of uh, of you who are watching this on YouTube <laughs> later on, you'll have a link to the to the Anime Matrix teardown video. We actually, we yeah, we did layers. an entire dedicated episode to the Anime Matrix display because of how unique it is and how much of a challenge it was to create. So if that's something you're interested in tuning into, we'll put the link here on YouTube and we can actually uh, send it here in the Twitch chat shortly. Yeah, so um, this is the inside of the of the upper case of the laptop. You can see the honeycomb mesh structure, and again, you see a lot of careful air guide uh, foam pads here. You see a different uh, stamped out plate for structure, and the whole thing is very reflective. I think you can see it on the camera as well, right? Yeah. Um, there's a there's a clear transparent film on it to make sure that no matter how hard you press on the laptop or it's it's shaking, whatever happens, um, none of the contacts of the motherboard touch the casing to avoid any short circuits or or problems. And, the, and you can see also the yep. The bl is that just black mylar as well? The black yeah, stuff. This yeah, this is black mylar. Yep. Um, and here you can also see you see all those holes here. Yep. Uh, you I yeah, you can see, see it too well. Yeah, you can, you see, can see it here on the on the metal. Yeah, in the right angle, you can see it. There you go. Um, so all those holes we have here, this is actually what we call cool zone. And cool zone is us guiding the airflow through the keyboard, and especially this area, obviously the WASD cluster. We want to make sure we keep it nice and cool. So we draw some air through huh. the laptop right here. Really you can smart. see there's a. There's a bunch of openings right here over the WASD cluster. And then there's two openings here, four openings here. The location of those holes, of those vents, um, depends on once we actually do the testing, we can measure where the hotspots are, so yeah. which key gets the hottest. And then based on that, we move those holes, those vents around a little bit and then are able to cool down that part of the keyboard and those keys a little bit more wow. by drawing more air through, through the keyboard over there. Uh, question from chat, is it extruded plastic or 3D printed? Which part? I assume he means like the honeycomb. Oh, no, no, this is uh, metal. This is oh, magnesium metal. aluminum It does look like plastic alloy. on camera. Oh, that's right, magnesium alloy. We did talk about that. Yeah, yeah, um, it, it is. <laughs> It, it actually, when that's the thing about magnesium aluminum alloy as well. When you touch it, it doesn't feel like metal. Really? Because, yeah, because metal usually feels cold to the touch, right? Yeah. And magnesium has a tendency, like, it doesn't feel that cold when you touch it. Huh. Um, it is magnesium, though. It is metal. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, um, it, I think it has something to do with the mass as well. It is super light. It's hard to show that on camera, but I mean, I can hold this with just two fingers very easily. Yeah. This part is super light. Um, yeah, and that's all thanks to the magnesium aluminum alloy. And uh, yeah, it's the good thing about it is it doesn't feel cold to the touch, but that also means it doesn't feel too hot to the touch when it gets warm. So that's a nice, nice another benefit of it. So one thing we've been talking about is basically shrinking this down to be the 14 inch size and maintaining yep. that same kind of power of a 15 inch laptop. Do you have a 15 mm. inch motherboard for the comparison of this G14? Oh, Jake, you know I do. I know you do. I know you do. <laughs> oh, and that actually, so, I mean, here we go. Yeah, it looks way bigger. <laughs> Let me actually uh, move some of the stuff off camera so we can just compare the motherboard directly. Um, were there any other questions about any other parts? Uh, we can definitely field some questions from chat if anybody has any more questions they'd like to throw our way about the G14. But yeah, this is so the yeah, G14 the... versus the G15 motherboards. Right. You can see it's like big brother, little brother, right? <laughs> Has like very similar layout and um, you can see clear difference though. Um, so yeah, 
This is the older version of the G15, so you'll notice the CPU is bigger. Um, but besides that, it's essentially the same thing. And you can tell that the overall PCB space is notably smaller for the G14. And the motherboard does look a whole lot more cramped on the G14. So props to our uh, engineers for being able to squeeze all of this into a much smaller PCB, smaller motherboard. Oh, yeah. And uh, somebody was asking about the memory. So there's the memory sodium slot here where yep. you can upgrade the memory. And that's actually easy to access, right? We, we, we made sure of that as well. You can see when you remove the bottom part, that those were the first things that uh, Kunlin removed, right? Was the SSD and the memory. So that's super easy to access. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, then on the other side of the motherboard, so here you see the back of the CPU and the back of the GPU with a backplate as well to mm -hmm. ensure really strong pressure, mounting pressure for the thermal module. Um, you see there's some memories, uh, memory modules, uh, some memory uh, chips here. So these are DRAM, DDR4 memory chips. So you got uh, some memory on the back on the motherboard here. These are Micron. Um, and on the front, you have the memory slot. Cool. Um, that's all I see for questions so far because we've gone through everything. And obviously, some people were asking about the enemy matrix display. We've posted that in the chat if you're interested in looking at our teardown there. I mean, really, though, when it comes to the technology, and this is just a question for me, of shrinking this down and making sure we can maintain the proper cooling for this kind of device, how, I mean, what is the biggest challenge with achieving that? I mean, yes, we've shrunk it all down. Yes, we've had to add some exhausts. Um, are there any other obstacles that were kind of unexpected to, to get here? Um, yeah, I think um, one of the key things is definitely cooling. Um, so the hardest part was getting an RTX 2060 into the G14 oh, okay. because the, the power consumption of that is pretty big. And, and you can also imagine, I mean, you want an RTX 2060. That's something that you usually have in your PC uh, on, the, on a card this size. And you want to squeeze that into a part of the motherboard in the laptop right. that is smaller than the graphics card itself. So that is super challenging. And then also cooling it. That was really difficult. And uh, yeah, we overcame that by opening up two vents on the sides as well. So we have four exhausts. And we also fine-tuned the fans. So I got the fans here as well. And these are really cool because you can... Maybe see it on camera if I hold it closer. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yep. Sorry, there's a delay, so <laughs> I always move it. There we go. So I think you can see that the fan blades are not all the same length. So there's they're alternating oh, between yeah. different lengths. And, yeah, that's done intentionally to um, avoid vortices. And it kind of helps to intentionally disrupt the airflow and avoid any vortices from forming. So essentially you're just, you know, giving bursts of air every every few milliseconds, I suppose it is, <laughs> microseconds. Yeah. Um to avoid that something like a tornado forms inside the fan chamber. So wow. um thanks to that, yeah, we we able to improve the airflow and Im increase the air pressure and uh very importantly, we're able to shrink down the fan chamber. So usually what happens is when you shrink down the fan chamber, you need a certain amount of space between the fan blades and the fan chamber itself. Otherwise, you create areas with low pressure and high pressure, and then it cancels itself out, and you, you, you're causing uh, yourself some trouble there. Um, so you want to make sure you don't go too close with the fan blades to the wall of the fan chamber. But thanks to those uh, new different fan blade design, uh, we're able to make the fan chamber smaller. We, actually, we didn't make the fan chamber smaller. We made the fan blades bigger. So we use actually the same fans, same diameter as in the G15 on the G14. Huh. Usually the bigger the laptop, the bigger the fan diameter. You right. want the fan to have a bigger diameter because then it pushes more air with each rotation. Right. So um, we were able to keep the same fan diameter size in the G14 as in the G15 by changing the fan blade design and then being able to go closer to the wall in the fan chamber without wow. causing issues. So pretty much every, every little step has been thought about to be able to bring this 
down to the smallest size achievable and to fit it into this 14 inch device. Yeah. And it was from the get go, it was clear it was about being super compact, super low weight, super yep. long battery life, but still having really high performance that can rival a 15 inch laptop. And we really managed to pull it off. Uh, thanks to NVIDIA and thanks to AMD working together with them, we really managed to pull it off. And this is really, I think, a a really nice step in the right direction for gaming laptops overall, pushing battery life, pushing the weight down, uh, making them more portable and lighter. I'm 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 really glad about that, and I can't wait to see and show you guys where this is taking us next. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, no, that's really cool. I mean, one of the other questions was just, w could we see an AMD GPU version of this in the future? An AMD GPU version. Yeah. Um, I can't really comment. Okay. On that's fine. That's future, fine. It's 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 a, stuff? You never know. You could. It's the sky's the limit. We could always see something like that exist. I mean, I can say theoretically, if yeah. you look at the new cards that AMD came out with, the new GPUs, uh, they have done very, uh, they've they've done a very good job improving their uh power efficiency. Yeah. So. Yeah. Technically, it should be possible. Okay, it's possible. That's all chat needs it to is, know. It is possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely possible. Cool. Um, I just want you to ask Kunlin, how long is this going to take him to put back together? Oh yeah, Kunlin, how long do you think it will take to put everything back together? A long Five time. Five minutes. Ten minutes. <laughs> 10 minutes yeah 10 minutes that's it okay yeah it's it's pretty fast he, he did it super slow I, yeah i know here, for so us for our sake i watched him do it and he we was can, like you can actually still remove the panel and and show i mean there is no anime matrix in this one yeah but so show can we yeah I, i'll let you do it <laughs> he's the master Very if so i was to try to put this back together i would fail so so miserably i mean i'd get it done it would just take me easy couple hours i feel yeah and, and you usually end up with like four scr spare screws right that's what <laughs> happened to me all the time <laughs> I just, yeah so that's why i said if if any of you guys want to do this at home um fix your laptop change your laptop just open it up to, to see what's going on inside be very mindful of keeping track which screw goes where yeah no it's uh it's very easy to mistake things and get things lost of course all right so this is the and you final. can see actually the tape that kunan pulled out here that holds the panel in the lid this is smartphone technology this is usually how smartphones um you know secure the battery and secure the panel so that that was also part of the g14 overall um really lending some of the know-how we have from our smartphone division in making very compact devices and you can see the bezel is super narrow yeah there is almost no space between the panel and the lid the chassis itself so there you go there's the panel beautiful it is it's can you can you see from like, the side i want to see how okay we can see from your camera angle i guess but yeah on the big screen very thin yeah it's extremely thin let me try to find the right angle oh there's quite a delay here we go yeah it's like one millimeter something wow I think two, probably two millimeters. Technology has come so far so fast. It really has. Yeah. And it's crazy. Like, it's so light, you know, just this thing. It would be so nice if this was your tablet, you know, with battery and processor and everything. That would be really cool. It's probably going to happen eventually, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So here we got the lid of the laptop. You can see um, or not see on the camera so clearly. Let me bring it closer. Still not. There you can see, you can see through the lids because there's all those wow. little holes, all yeah. those perforations. And some of them are CNC drilled and some of them are laser edged um, huh. because that actually keeps the structure uh, stronger. So around the hinges, we actually laser edge them because it improves <sighs> the structural integrity. That's crazy. And this is where your anime matrix would then sit and shine through the lid and let you display all sorts of cool stuff and yeah g14 a lot of us here internally are using it as our work laptops i got mine as well um i love it 
Yeah, it's great. I really, really like it. Very cool. So light, so long battery life. It's a really, really big improvement. I don't think I have any final questions. I mean, Andy the Lab asked if you think we'll see more devices have 16 by 10 rather than 16 by 9 in the future. Do you think that's um, going to be a transition? By 10. Yeah, I think so, because overall bezels are getting smaller. And um, so it's... it's why why do we have these dimensions for laptops right now is um it, it all follows the panel essentially mm. um but what's important is you still need a certain y dimension this is what's called the y dimension in the industry so you have x dimension you know the width and then you have the y dimension the depth and z dimension which is the height that's usually how you talk about it and uh, Z dimension, the thickness, obviously, there's a drive to make it slim, but not too slim. So you still have good thermals and, and good components inside. And the X dimension is very important for thermals because you usually have the thermal module here. This is where you have your vents in the back. And the more space you have for, for thermals uh, to have a higher surface area for the heatsink, the more heat you can remove, the quieter, the cooler the laptop can be, and the more performance it can deliver. And the Y dimension is important because you usually have the battery here. So you do need a certain amount of space for the battery. You do need a certain amount of space for the CPU and the GPU because um, you want the CPU and the GPU to be close to each other. You also need the CPU to be close to the memory, the GPU to be close to the GDDR memory. You also need them to be close to the VRM that actually powers them. Right. So you kind of have a certain limitation of how much Y dimension you need for the motherboard, and then you have the battery as well. You technically could put the battery under the motherboard or over the motherboard, but you know it's not ideal, right. and it will make the laptop it's bigger. A lot of heat. Yeah. So from the laptop itself, uh, you have a certain Y dimension, and that means that you have a certain Y dimension for your panel as well, right? So that means you have extra space under your 16 by 9 panel, which even if you're able to reduce the size of the driver for the panel, the panel driver, you still have that space or need that space for the lower side of the laptop. So a 16 by 10 panel essentially can use that and make it part of the panel. So yeah, that's why I think we see different aspect ratios lately, like 4 by 3 mm -hmm. and uh, 16 by 10 because there's still a certain need for the Y dimension for the laptop, for the motherboard, or even for tablets, for motherboard and battery and everything. So then let's just use that space for the display as well. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. The final question we're going to do is Andy the Lab really seems to want to put a new M.2 in his G14. So do, okay. you, do you know if it's best to go with uh, which generation you should use, Gen 3 or Gen 4, and how big of an M.2, could he put on there? Terabyte, two terabytes? Um, so yeah, fun fact. Linus did a video on a huge M.2 SSD. I don't remember actually how big it was, but it was massive. I think it was like four terabytes, eight terabytes. He wants terabytes, to do he wants to do an eight terabyte, apparently. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And and it's 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 pretty cool. We we didn't know about this. So uh apparently from what I heard, Linus got this SSD from the manufacturer that sent it to him. We're like, hey, can you make a video about this? It's pretty cool. And he was like, Oh yeah, and he tried it in several different laptops and it didn't work. And he did happen to have a G14 on hand and he put it in there and it worked. So in the final video that you see where he's talking about that SSD, it is in his G14. So yeah, it does work in the G14. I don't know actually why it didn't work in the other laptops. Huh. Um, but Interesting. Yeah, it does work in here. I can't officially vouch for it. Uh, it's not like we, un unfortunately, we don't have a partnership with that SSD vendor. It's not one of our qualified vendor parts that we test internally in our quality control to make sure everything 100% works no matter what. Um, so it's not officially supported. But yeah, from what I know, it works. Cool. And yeah, that is pretty impressive. Yeah. That's a really cool thing that SSDs are getting so big. Uh, it's crazy. I mean, all of the, the cost of this kind of technology has changed so much so fast. It's wonderful. Like all in the good way, right? In terms of SSDs, I'm so I remember. I'm glad that, you know, hard drives are gone. Like that was, yeah. that was the slowest thing. That was the biggest thing that was still keeping gaming laptops from, you know, being similar to a, a desktop. 
was the hard drives. As long as you still had a hard drive in there, like you had an SSD for Windows and it was fast and for some apps, but you still needed a hard drive because SSDs weren't big enough for, to just store everything. Yeah, but then those the laptop device. hard drives were just so slow. I mean, you know, hard drives were already slow, but then slow, laptop hard drives loud, were even slower. They can break easier. Yeah. Like everything True. about them is worse because oh, yeah, they have yeah. moving parts inside. I mean, it's... I'm a, yeah, every yeah. time it, I use like, my, my wife's old PC because I'm, I'm building her a new one right now actually I should tweet out some photos of all the parts because it's they all just arrived but just the wind up of that hard drive when I go to initiate a file makes me feel like I'm in the stone age I hate it I'm so glad it's gone it's just the worst yeah yeah and then also that's that's one of the first things that fails right over time yeah when, when you have uh, a absolutely laptop. and that's the worst thing it, to fail because then you lose yeah, all your data yeah 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 and and then you have this clicking sound it just randomly goes like click click yeah. click and you're like Been oh there. oh, oh. <laughs> yeah and and i just thought about it the other day like backing up data and everything because at home i i uh prepared my own nas to back everything up and you know to have like raid one yep um and it's like I haven't really had any issues on any of my devices with losing data. It's been a while. It's been a really long while. And then it hit me that, you know, this is like a pattern that I noticed in, in you know, my social circle with my friends. And like everybody doesn't really care about data security and backing things up until it hits them. You know, something goes wrong and then everybody's paranoid about it and thinks about storing it in the cloud, having backups, having, you know, a NAS to back everything up. And then eventually they just lose their interest in it again. Me, you know, I also lost my interest. I'm thinking about getting rid of those uh, backup hard drives. Yeah. And I was like, but probably once I do, something's going to happen. Well, luckily we got the cloud nowadays. Yeah, true. And and with SSDs, you know, it's it's really cool. They they have way lower failure rates than hard drives. So. Yes, much lower. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, I oh, think we are yeah. just about out of time here. Any final thoughts, Sasha? um no i'm really looking forward to showing you guys the upcoming models oh the future okay yeah, i mean everybody knows ces well, is coming ces you know. is coming but in january so we're gonna have a lot of announcements across the board for pretty much everything and that's a big part of our rg pulse we're going to be showing off um pretty much all of our new products we're going to be demoing tearing down some even uh, some future devices we've been taking a look at some of the technologies that are going into improving our technologies things like wi-fi 6 and you know yes wi-fi 6 is across the board but how we're implementing that we're looking into upgrading our power and the way that power works in general in our devices we're going to be doing a show on that very soon so look forward to that in december a bit of a preview on that and uh much much more but next week it is a holiday here in the u.s so we're going to have a a bit of a different show we're doing a black friday sale buying guide so we're basically it's just going to be a bunch of guys here from the asus in north america jamming about the coolest products we have for sale why they're good why we're excited about them gift ideas the whole deal if you're trying to get a new laptop you're trying to get a new gpu you're trying to get a new I, mean, I can't promise you that we're going to have 3080s in stock, so don't even say it. I know the comments are going to be in chat and in YouTube. I don't want to hear it because I want one too. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> it, yes, it's it's going to be a lot of fun to talk about just basically all the, the great deals that are coming up because this year is going to be crazy for, for if you're in the States, at least, or in North America, Black Friday is going to be like a month long. Rather than the one-day rush, it's going to be like a week for some retailers, longer for other retailers. And if you like to hunt for sales, like um, build a PC sales is my number one subreddit. I I just love reading about PC sales personally. Um, it's it's going to be it a, a sounds, joyous time. It sounds like an ROG QVC co-op. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> It's going to be Are you going to do time. like live sales? Like, oh, no. we only got 20 left. <laughs> Call now. Call now. And you also get this uh, uh, mouse pad. I was, I was thinking of memeing it and trying to deliver that, but uh, I, I don't you know. I should, man. That would be funny. I, yeah. You should. You should. Take live calls. That sounds dangerous on Twitch. Um, all right, guys. Well, uh, that's going to do it here for RNG Pulse. Again, a big thank you to Kunlin and, and Sasha for joining me here for this teardown. Yep. Thank you, Kunlin. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you next time, everyone. GG's.